Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the various parts of historic procedure. There are several key parts of historic procedure. First, there are the parameters. Stored procedures can accept parameter values such as inputs. Depending on how parameters are defined, modified values can be passed back to the calling program. Also, the stored procedure has a body where statements are executed. So stored procedures can execute SQL statements, utilize conditional logic such as if then or case statements, or have looping constructs like while loops to perform tasks. So they can do re repetitive tasks within the stored procedure. And stored procedures can call other stored procedures. Stored procedures can be very handy as they can manipulate the results of a query by cursors. Cursors allow procedures to access the results row by row. And you can use cursors to loop through and SQL statements results. And then the third major part of a stored procedure are the output or the results returned from the stored procedure. A stored procedure can return a single value such as a number or a text value. It can return a row or a result set or it can return values as part of uh, output parameters. The single value we've seen where we've calculated um, the time it's taken to travel a distance. A uh, set of rows return would be when we run a query and we're getting back like tracking information or that employee uh, record that we talked about earlier. And it, we're doing running a select statement. We get a query and we return that query back. That would be a set of rows. We can also set up, as part of our parameters, a parameter that has a output keyword on it. And then when we set that parameter value, that value can get returned back to our calling program. So it's a way of passing that value back and forth.